hate writing. You got it. All right, so it's 1048. So let's go ahead and start the finance meeting for today, uh, January 27th. Thanks for being patient. I had meetings today that weren't in school, so I'm not in school. My computer here is like super slow. And uh, anyway, it took me a minute to log in. So uh, let's go ahead and start uh, discussing items that we do have coming up at Monday's meeting. And uh, so Kate, and we'll turn the screen over to you and you wanna start sharing that so everybody can see it. And then anybody with any questions, feel free to chime in. And uh, Kate and Doug, if you wanna walk us through, that would be excellent. Sure, I can, uh, I'll jump in here. Sorry, I was on a Empire State Development meeting, so I was late also. So, um, so I, you know, we have two public hearings. Kate, if you just wanna scroll to the resolutions, we can kind of skip through a lot of this. We've got uh, the basic stuff here at the beginning. We have two public hearings uh, right at the very beginning, one on a tax code amendment uh, relating to double frontage lots, and then one on um, proposed costs associated with the Canandaigua Farmington Water District uh, that we've talked about a couple of different times now. So uh, we will have a presentation from Bill Davis at MRB Group at the meeting on Monday to go through that a little bit. Uh, just kind of advancing after the reports, uh, we, I think it's worth noting, we do anticipate, because it's just unusual in our process, a brief executive session where the board would move into executive session, anticipate a motion to move into executive session for a short time period and come back out uh, with then continuing the regular meeting on as scheduled. So just so everybody's aware of that. Yep, that is correct. Okay. Jumping into resolutions then. Uh, the first resolution being, and again, this is... Um, the month of January always for us is never like the rest of the year uh, because we have the organizational meeting and then we always need this end of year closeout meeting. And really the whole purpose of this meeting is to get those expenses uh, and everything recorded so that we can close out the 2021 budget. Uh, Kate can close out the 2021 budget. Uh, the fiscal year is a calendar year for the town of Canandaigua. And um, meanwhile, we have uh, expenditures that are already coming in for the 22 budget. So for the month of January, we actually operate uh, two fiscal or two fiscal budgets uh, as we're closing out 21 and getting final expenditures in and moving forward with 2022. So that's really the, the essence of this meeting. Uh, we have our monthly financial reports, some updates associated with that. I'll just jump right into the next one, Kate, and feel free to jump in here. Uh, encumbrance of funds from the 21 budget into 22. Yep, absolutely. So as you know, we implemented the purchase order process um, with the uh, transition over to Info 10. It's been fantastic. It helps us keep track of all of the different purchases we have outstanding at the end of the year and get a better handle on our encumbrances for the year end. So um, as I have all of the 2021 expenses rolled in, um, I looked to at the outstanding purchase orders and we determined that this chart here are the items that need to be encumbered for the total amount of $184,080 84, and 50 cents. Um, so what we're looking for in this resolution is the board to acknowledge uh, that these outstanding uh, orders have been placed, the contracts, the agreements are in place or perhaps have already partially billed and we're just outstanding as far as the rest of the, the follow-up to complete the deal. So this would authorize me to encumber these, this list of purchase orders and to make the entries on the budget to roll those into the 2022 budget year. Well, you guys do a nice job of closing out POs, if that's all you have. This has made a huge difference <laughs> having code. Let me tell you, Doug and I used to find them a year, you know, six months, <laughs> three months into the year, we'd find, oops, there's something. So this has been really, really clean. It really has helped us a lot be more organized in this way. We've got a little spelling error here, just so you know, on 551. That would be what was entered into the purchase order. Okay. So those are just pulled directly from the system. Uh, just here and there, we do have a few typos, but. I don't think it makes um, too much of a difference as far as the intention of the purchase. <laughs> Uh, the next resolution, if there's no other questions on that, the annual uh, report from the clerk. Jean, I know you're on. I don't know if there's anything you want to share. I nope, I don't believe so. My um, 
reports and my bank statements are here in the office. So if any of the board members want to come in and take a look, you're more than welcome. Any questions on that? Okay. Moving on to the next resolution. The, the next resolution, I just want to spend a, a moment on here and chat with you a little bit about the board obviously uh, can always make any motion during a town board meeting, any of the members of the board, or make any amendments to any resolution that's presented. Um, you might want to have additional discussion. This one might be okay as is. Essentially, it's this. We talked at our last finance committee meeting just for the general fund. So our fiscal budget is about, give or take, $16 million, including all of the special districts, the capital funds, and everything else. We operate a general fund, a highway fund, and then 28 special districts, actually 29 now with our new Uptown Business Improvement District. Essentially, it's this, that our we have a fund balance policy. Uh, you might remember we in 2017, we were audited by the New York State Comptroller's Office. One of the findings was specifically that the town of Canandaigua had too much fund balance and that uh, they, wasn't, they weren't necessarily planning for it. So we enacted a fund balance policy. Uh, it does give us uh, some flexibility in terms of when projects are coming up and how much money we should have at any given time. Um, yeah, Jared's frozen, just so everybody knows who's going to log out and log right back in. But um, the um, <clears throat> it, basically, the policy tells us that we should have a minimum amount in our fund balance and that we should have a maximum amount. And it's based on a, a variety of different things, percentages, et cetera. And then it also gives us flexibility when we understand that there's projects that are coming up uh, where we might need extra money in fund balance to give us greater flexibility. One of the things that traditionally we will do when we get to the end of year closeout is we will look at the amount of money that we have essentially in fund balance. And when it is too high, we will look at making appropriations to certain reserve funds so that the money that then is moved over into the reserve funds are for a specific purpose. And then that way it comes out of the unassigned fund balance. Once an amount of money is designated for a certain repair, or uh, I'm sorry, a certain reserve fund, the parameters associated with the establishment of that reserve fund are defined by the law that enacted the reserve fund. And so those monies become very specific for very specific purposes. Uh, so it does restrict the use or the spending of those funds and it makes it um, essentially to whatever it is. So for instance, in this list that Kate is showing here, I'll just use the uh, first one, Campus Repair Reserve. Um, that an allocation to that reserve fund then means that that money has to be used for uh, campus being the town hall, town complex campus, uh, including the highway facility, repairs to our buildings here on the property. Or for instance, in the second case, the open space reserve fund the money going to the use of open space protection, which a lot of times is what we use for our purchase of development rights program, or if the town was interested in acquiring land or extinguishing development rights on a particular piece of land. So during the last meeting, uh, we talked about our general fund balance, unassigned fund balance being approximately at $3 million. And at that point we had not, did not yet know our fourth quarter sales tax number for the year 2021. We have a fantastic problem, and it really is a fantastic problem that most municipalities, you know, truly, honest and truly wish they had. Our fourth quarter sales tax anticipated revenues were substantially higher than what we had budgeted for in 2020, of course, during COVID, when we did the 2021 budget. So, Rewind to October of 2020 when we enacted the 2021 fiscal budget, specifically for the general fund, we were anticipating about $2 million in sales tax revenue coming into the general fund. That number ends up being here with the fourth quarter sales tax about three and a half million. So substantially more than what we were planning. And for us, it actually further exacerbates the problem that we have too much money in fund balance. So this would take this specific resolution takes a million additional dollars in 
uh, out of the fund balance, unassigned fund balance, and allocates it to these reserve funds in this specific project uh, that's listed below the Canandaigua Farmington Water District, so that a million dollars comes out of that unassigned fund balance. However, the end result is that there is still going to be, even if you move this million dollars out of unassigned fund balance, there's still going to be too much money in unassigned fund balance per the town board's fund balance policy that's been enacted by the town board of the town of Canada for 2022. Now, there is a caveat here. We know that expenses for 2022 are going to be substantially higher than they have been in the past. Everything from water lines to Jim was telling me last night, fire hydrants that sold for $2,500 last year are selling for 3,500 now. I mean, just any number of things. We know that pipe that we just purchased recently for $22 a linear foot is going for $80 a linear foot. There's any number of projects that we know that are coming up uh, where we anticipate expenses are high. So, you know, it's probably okay. And there actually is a whereas in this resolution that identifies that we identify that the fund balance is too high, but we also know that with the current volatile market that the expenses are going to be higher. So we might need the flexibility to tap into that unassigned fund balance. But again, the reason why we might want to leave, and I, and I know that there's a lot to this, but the reason why we might want to leave a little extra in the unassigned fund balance is that gives us maximum flexibility to use those funds for any of the needs of the town of Canandaigua. Again, once it goes into a reserve, then it is specific for that project. So let me pause there and then we can talk about these reserve funds. Any questions on any of that? I was going through a lot there. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So what is the fund balance right now and what is it supposed to be in between? What are the... So the, the top number, the cap number for the general fund, specifically for the general fund, we should have give or take per our fund balance policy. If you were just looking at the numbers, about a million, million and a half, say a million and a half on the on the high side. Right now, as of today, without this resolution when we go to close out this budget it'd be about four and a half million okay wow. that includes the that includes the transfer to reserves no no mm -mm. no so it'd be about three and a half million then there is an appropriation so that would get it down closer to the maybe two and three quarters that type of thing uh, but it's still going to be more than per what our fund balance policy allows now our fund balance policy does say if there are projects or expenses that it gives us the flexibility to increase over that. Um, so I think we're okay in terms of our fund balance policy, knowing that the 2022 expenditures are going to be higher than we budgeted for. Um, we more than likely are going to need to do a budget adjustment first quarter 2022 as we're starting to get some of these projected estimates of planned projects for 2022, thus using some of that unassigned fund balance. But there'll what, still be 3.5 in the unassigned fund balance after we take this million and reassign it? No. How much would be, my, that's my question, how much would be in there after we move the million into these other places? About two and three quarters. Two and so three what, quarters. what's the percentage, what, what's one and a half million, what's that percent of our total budget? Well, administrative manual you're exactly right that's exactly what i'm grabbing off of my shelf that i refer to quite often um so our general fund fund balance policy says unrestricted fund balance of not less than 15 percent no more than 30 percent of the average annual budget appropriations um so joe i, I mean there you, you look at any number of different things obviously uh with our general fund our general fund we're normally collecting somewhere give or take uh, three quarters of a million in property tax for the general fund. Uh, sales tax is a big, huge revenue contributor to our general fund, but then we have the user fees and any number of other things that make up the, the revenue side of our town general fund. Thanks. So, so I would add with this, when Doug and I were talking about it and like to reiterate what he said, Doing it this way gives us the best flexibility. It also gives us the ability to come back if we need to. I mean, we can adjust policy. We also can come back and see what we really need to do with that money before we, you know, put it in other reserve funds where we don't have access to it. You can always appropriate more in your next budget too. Yeah. So we can, 
we have the ability to still access this later on. We're not locking it up. And if we see halfway through the year that we're still in great shape, then we can adjust, we can adjust accordingly. If, if we could just spend a minute on the reserve funds themselves in, in the second part of this resolution, you see the credit and the totaling out of this million dollars. And Kate, if you can help me as we kind of go through these. So the campus repair reserve, I mentioned that's for like buildings, for instance. We know that there's a roof that needs to be replaced on a building here on the campus that's, you know, I think, Jim, you told me your estimates that you had gotten were somewhere in the neighbor of 100. Obviously, right. it's going to be higher than that. Mm -hmm. So the 125 will probably eat up the majority of that. So I doubt very seriously that'll sit in that reserve fund too terribly long. I think the current reserve fund, that campus reserve fund has approximately 80,000 in it currently, which this would bring it up to close to 200. But again, with a planned project, it'll drop back off. Um, the open space reserve fund, the next one there has, I believe, Kate, it's just over a million, right? It's in that? Yes, that's correct. So this would bring that up to, uh, you know, one a quarter million, um, 1.25. You know, this reserve fund is the reserve fund that we, you know, we, we have one of the most robust purchase and development rate programs in the entire state of New York. We're one of only three municipalities that actually have routinely been awarded those programs. We contribute for those agricultural protection parcels $50 an acre. That's our town established policy. Um, and, and that's been working very, very well for us. This money can also be used to extinguish other conservation or extinguish other development rights. It could be used for conservation purposes. It could be used for acquisition of real land for the purpose of open space protection, not for recreation per se, but for open space uh, protection. That's a separate reserve. That's I just that's why I said that. Um, but this does give you some flexibility and some some different things specifically that could be done with that uh, as you consider different projects going forward. There's also a project team that was established last year relative to conservation easements. Uh, there were two main avenues for that project team, the first being the conservation subdivision regulations and the reviewing those. Uh, that team concluded that work. So for 2022, that team needs to now work with the group. And I know we've been talking about a new project team kickoff meeting late February or early March relative to really looking at our conservation easement programs and maybe what some of those avenues are. And that may result in some um, opportunities as we continue to look at open space protection. We have uh, obviously our agriculture enhancement plan, our open space protection plan have both been completed for the town of Candegua. Those of you downstairs in the Oriana room, the maps are there on the wall that actually identify and rank all of those parcels in the town of Canandaigua and those with the highest natural resource ratings and those with the highest agriculture ratings. So we have a lot of that homework done. Um, the next reserve fund here is the solid waste management reserve. This is relative to we know eventually we're going to have to do something with the transfer station. I think the current balance, Kate, is about a half a million, right, ballpark? Yeah. I think it's closer to 800,000. We made oh. a pretty significant contribution at the end of 2020 to that specific fund as well. So this would bump it up about a million to about a million? Yeah. Okay. All right. So obviously there's, uh, you know, there's some money there to look at something for the, uh, so for the transfer station. Uh, the next two resolution or the next two reserve funds here, the highway equipment reserve, um, this a few years ago was upwards of uh, 350,000. And as we got into COVID, each of these reserve funds had a balance of about 350,000, both the highway equipment and the highway improvement reserves. Um, as we got into COVID with unknown, we started to draw a little bit out of these reserves. Um, and I want to say they're both now, is it about 175 ballpark, 150, 175, somewhere in that ballpark, right? Yep. Um, so this would increase them back both close to 300,000 each highway equipment reserve can be used for the purchase of equipment highway improvement reserve can be used for road improvements. And then the final one there um, and Jared I'm, I'll let you take the lead on this one is the uh, allocation uh, to one of our special districts, the Canandaigua Farmington Water District of the town of Canandaigua, specifically for improvements that will need to be made for the residents of the town of Canandaigua and the Canandaigua Farmington Water District of Canandaigua. Yeah, and that, and that one's to make sure that we, 
we know the project is coming in, the, the presentation on the project, and we know it's coming in quite a bit over budget, and that's to allow us the, the flexibility to help offset some of those increases that they're probably going that they will see. Uh, so we don't have any dramatic increases because it's not good when you have 69 cents in one part of the town for water and then over a dollar in another part. So we're trying, we're going to, we'll have access to that to try to, you know, to equalize and take off some of the sting of the increases that will be faced. Um, just a note on that one. Kate, Canandaigua Farmington, I believe is SW 515, right? Not 500. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Just a typo there. We'll have to fix on that resolution. But um, okay. Does anybody else have any questions on that? I know that was a ton of stuff. I told you we need to spend a minute on that one. That was... Yeah, I have a question. Um, <clears throat> did we make a contribution to Canandaigua Consolidated when we took on the big project? No, sir. Why? Why are we doing it here? That's a decision for you guys. That's why you guys that are the elected officials get paid the big bucks. I would say, Terry, is this going from my perspective? Is project is... itself? Go ahead, Terry. No, I said, is this going against the capital project itself? At this no. point, it, it would go into the district and then the like we did with the booster tank and um, pump station, then there was an appropriation of fund balance from that district to the capital project. I believe it was one million from for the booster station and tanks that we appropriated from SW500 to the capital project. But the way this is written would put it simply into the fund balance. The capital project does not exist at this point in time. And there will be. Yeah, let me just follow up on that a little bit more, if I could, real quick. So, so the capital project actually for this project would not exist in the town of Canandaigua. It would exist in the town of Farmington. So this resolution would actually move the money to SW actually 515, the Canandaigua Farmington Water District. So the way that water district works is we have a very low fund balance in that water district because basically it's money in, money out. Can, the town of Farmington 100% administers that water district for the town of Canandaigua, and they, every year at budget time, let us know approximately the bill that they're going to send us, which give or take is $185,000. We would anticipate that would go up uh, as a result of, you know, if you move forward on Monday night associated with that project and what their, you know, subsequent tax rates. So this basically allows us to put money into that district to help offset or at least keep consistent the tax rate to build it up a little year after year. So it's not such what we often talk about as a roller coaster, right? Being a train instead of a roller coaster on the tax rate and um, keeping it fairly consistent so that the town board each year as part of the budget process could make appropriations of the Canandaigua Farmington Water District of the town of Canandaigua's fund balance to that budget for that upcoming year to help keep that consistent. So it doesn't go necessarily against the capital project. It could be used to offset the individual cost of water to anybody that's in that district. Not the user fee, but the tax rate. Just the it, it's just the revenue and expenditures each year for the budget each year when we do the budget. So, you know, if you put this hundred and twenty five thousand in there, that'll bring the fund balance currently of that district to give or take one hundred and sixty thousand um, dollars for that. And then we'll get a bill from Farmington next year, more than likely based on some of the conversations that we're having somewhere around 215, $230,000. So maybe the climb next year is to 195 or 200 instead of going all the way to 220 to help build that slowly. So it's not such a big tax rate impact for the residents of the town of Canandaigua, specifically in the Canandaigua Farmington Water District of Canandaigua. So Doug, what was what was this past year's um, assessment from Farmington? Well, the, the fee Ballpark. that we, 
the fee that we had to pay the town of Farmington was $185,500. The assessment right. of the district is $241 million. Okay. All right. So 185,000. So, I mean, so basically what, like Doug was saying, what this allows us to do is they come back next year at 250. We can split the difference with some of this and help lower that, lower that increase. Uh, so we can help is offset. Like, uh, is the increase going to continue at that level? I mean, what happens going forward? Yeah. So it would continue at that level because what they would be doing is bonding. The, for this project, this new project will bond yes. for like a 25 year period. So if they go to 225 or 250, it will be at least that, if not greater, for the next 25 years. So are we planning to subsidize that for 25 years? No, I think what we've done in the past, what we did do for Canadegua Solid or Canadegua Consolidated Water District, because we had more control over that, is you remember we built that up over a five-year period so that it wasn't such a significant tax increase for the residents. And so we took, not from the general fund, as Jim was saying, but from, by building up the fund balance of the Canandaigua Consolidated Water District and starting to do that year after year. Um, we started to do that a few years ago in the Canandaigua Farmington Water District because in 2017, that district actually had a negative fund balance of $16,568. And so we had to build that up to offset the water relevy charges that come in and go out so that we had that flexibility to make that whole because then it's the following year that the district is reimbursed. I'm probably complicating you, but, but essentially it's again, trying to minimize the roller coaster trying to it's it's not going to be completely a train right keeping it flat but trying to minimize the incline is what you would be able to do by doing this otherwise otherwise you're realistically looking at least probably give or take a 25 to 30 cent tax rate increase for the north half of the town of Canandaigua uh per thousand uh, in the Canandaigua Farmington Water District of Canandaigua, taking it from 77 cents approximately up to about a dollar. When you talk about the uh, <clears throat> how we built up that fund balance in consolidated district, the we is those of us that live in that district that paid into that. It wasn't the town making a gift, it was individual users like us paying into that as that stepped up. And we built that, we, the users and the residents in that area built that up. Right. It wasn't right. the town taking money from some other source and building it up, it was us. And here yeah. we're subsidizing, we're subsidizing not just the residents there, but we're subsidizing Pactive, Acoustus, and any other business up there. Well, and as you know, we've had those conversations about their you know, there really should be a concerted effort and it would have to be led by the town of Farmington because the Canandaigua deferred to the town of Farmington many, many moons ago in terms of administration of that water district and setting the fees for that water district. And so things like, for instance, the water meters uh, or fees associated with the volume of the line that comes in <coughs> for the ex specific examples that you used, so that the businesses that are such large consumers and that have that demand that they are maybe contributing more rather than sharing that cost on a percentage basis equally with the single family homeowner. Yeah. So I think it's a, given. it's a two pronged approach. I mean, this is the hand that we've been dealt, unfortunately, but also this would it, this it's not either or it's this and trying to get an increased getting farmington to increase the rate to those other places uh and charge them accordingly uh, i don't know if we want to discuss this and ask that question during the, the public hearing that we have the understanding that they are going to do that and make a good faith effort to do that i also think the town board needs to consider the use of general funds in the special district yeah. going forward with any special request, whether it's water, sanitary, storm, 
um, you may be setting the precedent here by putting 125 towards this water district this one time may cause problems down the road. Why can't the general fund feed other projects that want to be done? It's not something I've ever seen in 12 years. The general fund was putting money into a special district. It's always been by the user of that area, not a town-wide lump sum going to one part of the town. I don't know if I call it a precedent. I mean, we, you could, but it's kind of like a case by case thing because this this situation is so un, it's kind of unusual that you have such a big uh, a big project and, and it came in so much higher than than what we thought it was going to be. So we'll, we'll play the devil's advocate. I know of an area that has a drainage problem, but it's not a public property. It's not a drainage district. Jerry gets asked, can you fix this? Well, is he going to go to the general fund every time we have a drainage problem to fix a problem on somebody else's property? And it's not the drainage, but the town, everybody has to pay for that repair, but only a certain amount of people get the benefit. This could go on for with stormwater forever with general fund money. So I understand the premise of what the 125 is doing, I'm just putting it out there, the board needs to be careful how they're gonna set the precedence going forward. People have also have problems with paying for stuff. Let's say consolidated needs all of its water main replaced because the EPA says, we have asbestos pipe, replace them all. Is the general fund gonna help pick up that cost? We just saw, saying. We saw the need coming years ago for a the new booster pump and the increased storage for Canandaigua consolidated. So, you know, with Doug's urging years ago, we started ramping up that own empty every year mm -hmm. that we, three of us anyway, pay into every year. And we anticipated that. So it wouldn't be that big shock if we hadn't done that. We would have been faced mm -hmm. with the same thing that we're talking about with Canandaigua Farmington. So, I mean, Okay. I don't want to say that Farmington let people down, but you know they I don't think anticipated well they couldn't anticipate this huge increase in the cost of the project. That's just a but you know seeing the nine million dollar project that it was originally scheduled to be coming along, they didn't try to minimize that impact. You know, and that now we're faced with do we do it or I mean the project itself is going to be approved. It has to be because there's no choice really. But this contribution, it's in the grand scheme of things, 125 grand when you got a four and a half million dollar, not a whole lot of money in that sense. But still, it is, I, I, I agree with Jim, it, it is a kind of precedent makes setting. Sense. I hate to see these people faced with a huge yeah. increase, but we have yet to see what those numbers will be. I don't, Doug, they haven't sent anything more to us, have they, from Farmington? And, the last thing I saw was from uh, Peter yesterday saying that the town of Manchester and village of Manchester were the biggest user. Then uh, Pactiv and Acoustis was number three after that. But that's the only information I think we've seen. We didn't say any rates or amounts. Yeah, that's that's all other than just that early forecasting that I did for you guys a week or so ago. Yeah. Um, we also did have a request from Supervisor Inglesby when we did meet with him last week, keep in mind to allocate uh, 200,000 plus or minus of our ARPA funds for this project. And Farmington was looking, it, and that's a percentage basis. And Farmington was also looking to allocate, I think um, 700, I believe, plus or minus of their ARPA funds to this project. Um, you know, I know that we've been talking about using our ARPA funds for something else and we jokingly have said we've spent our ARPA funds seven or eight times now, but oh, yeah. I mean, realistically, we have. I mean, if we if we were to really fund everything we've talked about, um, this is another way to get to that same ballpark um, or or the use of the ARPA funds, either one. So. I, Doug, I know that uh, we'll probably be two years before this necessarily gets put full on everybody's tax bill. 
Um, there's been discussion about looking at other large meter charges um, to maybe change the rate of water for the consumption of the larger businesses. I wonder if it'd be worth for the short term, I know of holding this money and on accounted for fund balance until something could be reviewed further instead of encumbering this now and set the precedence going forward might make everybody feel a little bit better about what we're doing in this water district. That's a good point. Maybe because you can always go back and do this. You can always go back and do this. Yeah. Can, can we, um, is there precedent for loaning, do it a loan and reimbursement? No, do to do froms or not. Um, they're, they're frowned upon. Okay. <laughs> it, would, it would have to be uh, very, very well documented and short term. It would okay. Be short term, and I don't. So it couldn't. It couldn't be an. It couldn't be an open ended. How, however, the town in every single and I'm I'm just making sure that you guys have all the information. Uh, nobody has mentioned the fact that the town every single time a new water district has been created has gifted money to that water district in, in terms of a 202B contribution. Usually it's coming from Canandaigua Consolidated because then it defaults and then becomes part of Canandaigua Consol Consolidated eventually. Nice. But there is always a contribution from that to that new special district to help it get up and going to get it below the debt threshold. I think the real difference here in this particular the situation is we really have you know a lot of times i talk to you guys about the knobs and the valves that we have on making stuff work and and making it all we're very limited in this particular situation because we don't administer this water district um you know it'd be different if this was part of canadagua consolidated and truthfully maybe we need to think about that especially with all the efforts and stuff that we're doing in uptown and and maybe we run this water district and there's a meter at the town line and farmington does theirs um but you know, right now, you know, even like what we've talked about in terms of the businesses and the fees and all that, that none of that would be done essentially by the town board of the town of Canandaigua. It would be done by the town of Farmington. I mean, and we're really handcuffed. I mean, I hear Terry saying, and I agree with you, Terry, that over the years we have, we prepared and built up Canandaigua Consolidated and prepared for it. But I mean, we, but we did that in preparation. Again, going back to this is kind of the hand, this, I see this as more of a, you know, a, uh, a unique and unusual circumstance that this is the hand that we were dealt by another municipality to help with this, with, with this situation that we're in. Um, I see it as a, you know, as a unique and special circumstance in that regard. I don't see this as an everyday thing especially because we don't administer, we don't set the rates, we don't have the ability to plan years ahead that this is gonna come. Uh, we're really limited in what we can do. Well, and, the, and that's honestly one of my biggest problems with it. It's kind of like throwing money out into the air and we don't know how we're gonna plan for it, how it's gonna move going forward. And it's not a one-time you know, offsetting cost, it's literally attempting to create a buffer zone, so to speak, that we can can work on going forward. But that's one of my biggest problems with it is that it's not, we can't define what we're doing with it. So. Well, that, that's why it would be nice if we could get Farmington to show us mm -hmm. what those numbers are gonna be going out in time, you know, once you move, you know, from the band into the bond and, the, and beyond, what are those numbers going to be? Is there time, as Jim suggested, over the next couple of years? Because this won't hit anybody's uh, pocketbook for probably three years. Mm -hmm. Is there time to have that ramp up like what we did in Canada with Consolidated so that then the final impact isn't going to be as great as it would be looking at it today? You know, a step function. And uh, uh, so I don't know if Farmington is going to have that information for us by Monday or not, right? I don't know. just haven't seen much, you know. I don't know if Almost we should have, should have approached the concept of splitting it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I think for the board's purposes on Monday, 
the project needs to be done. Oh, well, that's yeah, a given. Right. I think you need to move that along. But I think we also need to think about the board needs to say, okay, what I just said earlier, okay. let's research this further before we make a decision. Yeah. I, you know, this doesn't need to be done Monday, in my opinion, Monday night. <coughs> yeah. That's not my, that's up to you guys to figure out. So. Jim, you're talking, Jim, you're talking about the 125,000? Yes. But that's up for the board if they're here to discuss themselves. I mean, and it's also difficult to sit there and say, oh, we got an extra $2 million. We don't know what to do with that. We're not giving 125 to you guys. Stop saying well, that. It's, it's a tough, tough thing to say, too. Yeah, well, it's, it's not because <laughs> it's a special district. Yes. And you can't which take, I fully it shouldn't understand. be taking general oh, fund money to a special district. I just think it's going to. I completely agree. Because we've already said to consolidate it, you guys are paying the freight. Yeah. And we have. So no. again, it's a, I recognize we don't have the control and all that, but uh, maybe the thing to do is to hold off on doing this for now and explore what the ramifications would be to the town of Canandaigua if we said, we're going to put a meter up here and we're going to control our own destiny for our own, you know, uh, town residents. And, you know, now, so what would the impacts of that be? I don't think we can say what they'd be right now, financially speaking. You, the board could consider Doug's option of ARPA money, use part of that, and then continue doing your sewer district potential expansion somewhere. There, you could then, Kate, correct me if I'm wrong, take your general fund money to help offset the expense and then reimburse the general fund at the final bond to get that project done. But so, we don't have any of that expense, Jim. That's, no, I know. I'm just, I'm that's just talking all about Farmington. That. Hey, Kate, can you let me share my screen for a second? I just there's a there's another spreadsheet that I had done when we were when we were uh, meeting with uh, Farmington the other day that I was just going to share with everybody on this call real quick, just because it's got some projection numbers. Kate, it still says it's disabled uh, under the security tab. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so let me just share this screen here real quick. So this, Jared, and I apologize. I gave you the wrong number. I was looking at the year before here. So the 2022 budget, so the bill basically that we got from Farmington was $206,000. So that's for the 2022 budget. Yeah. That was an 85 cent tax rate for the Canandaigua Farmington Water District. $241 million yeah. here is the assessed value. So then looking out, this is just from the call the other day, the projections, including the debt service again, because we as the town of Canandaigua town board, the town board will not be actually paying the bond payment. The town board would not be paying or authorizing the payment of the, down payment, the, the bond payment. We'll be giving the money to Farmington essentially because it's their bond. It's their stuff to administer, right? We'll be given this amount. And so projections are if we have to pay Farmington $242,000 next year, assuming about a one to three percent increase in the assessed value of that district in the town of Canandaigua specifically, the tax rate goes from 85 cents to 97 cents. So that's about a 35 ish thousand dollar increase on the debt service payment. But then in the out years, you know, once you're talking about a four million to four and a half million dollar bond or a four and a half to five million dollar bond, that's what we're talking about here in the out years. You're talking about an increase. Here's the tax rate again, $1.14, $13, $23.22. So it does start to go up on these out years. But again, tax rate is determined by the tax levy. So this is the tax levy versus the assessment. So if we're a consistent assessment going up, that's about what it's going to be. You know, with Uptown, we have and a variety of other things. If there's a big increase in the assessed value, this number would be significantly less. That's where it gets complicated because we do have some dials, just not all the dials. Well, yeah, we're trying to hit a moving target that we don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know what we're what ammunition we're going to have from Farmington, and we don't know what our target's going to look like in the end. But um, I mean, to Adeline's comment, this if we were to allocate this money, it's not going to permanently subsidize that dollar twenty three or whatever it might be, 
it's going to slow the climb to that point. Eventually, they're going to end up at that point. This is just going to slow the climb to that spot. Okay, I had a question. Kate, you had mentioned, and uh, whoever else, because I can't recall uh, recall this, you mentioned a million dollars for the water booster tank that we had talked about. Did that? I thought you said that came from General. Did that come from General or Canandaigua Consolidated? That came from SW five hundred, the Canandaigua Consolidated okay. Water District Fund balance. Okay. In other words, our own money in the Consolidated right. District. Right, I know. Our, yeah, I know. And then, as Doug alluded to, any money that had been given to extensions also came from the Canada Consolidated, consolidated mm -hmm. Water District. Right. But within the Consolidated Water District. Correct. Right. Those districts' so extensions that would just back come back again. in once right. they yeah. so the, the wash. Canada with Consolidated District. That's that's not the whole town. No. 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 Okay. Correct. It's about it's south of five hundred fifty. Right. 550, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. so the one and a quarter, this is a one time shot not to be incurred again. Correct. It's my my understanding of how we should look at it. It's not not a recurring thing. It's uh to get us more slowly to that end point. More slow. It's not going to take away whatever that final dollar twenty-five or dollar twenty, whatever it might be. It's just, just slowing the climb to that spot. I'd wait. Can always go and do it. I have to kind of agree with waiting too. I think that. <laughs> and, and, and in the meantime, explore some of these other options. You know what? You know, should we have more control? You know that. that I mean, Farmington. Not throwing stones at Farmington, but they've been aware of this problem for a decade, at least. And had this project been pursued four years ago, when they really started going after it. It wouldn't be 13 million. It probably wouldn't have, you know, it would have been closer to the nine. And some of this discussion would not have to be had. So, well, the other thing, too, is this is a brand new issue for most residents. And it's an extremely complicated issue for most residents. It takes up, and it's a extremely complicated issue for me as a new town board member. Right. It takes a while to digest this information and oh, figure yeah. out the best direction forward, I think, on this. It's, and what really the community wants. And, and, to Jim's point, it's very concerning to me to be doing something from the entire general firm that's only helping one of our districts. That's very yeah. concerning. Just, I've, yeah, you've heard me. If the, I, I hear two members saying to not do this, and, and obviously we have a member that's not present on the call. Uh, you guys will have to amend the resolution on, during the town board meeting. The very other thing that you are Oh, he is. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Um, the other thing that you'll have to think about is whether or not you want to still allocate a million dollars. If you're going to reduce that to 875, if you're going to leave it a million, what you do with the other 25, whatever your motion is, you just need to, it's got to be balanced, obviously. Um, so either you reduce it to 875 and you just leave fund balance that much more, or you allocate it to a different reserve fund. What, how much, I know we taught, and I know this is completely hypothetical and you kind of threw it out there and we, Jim, what do you, what would it cost to put a meter? Do you have any, is there any ballpark? What, what would we be looking at to kind of separate so we had the ability to set our own rates? Well, we would be one, two, three, four vaults with master meters. With engineering, you're probably four hundred thousand. You're a hundred thousand a vault. Okay. What's that? I go half a million. Yeah, half a million. Somewhere in that range. So we're looking at about five hundred thousand. Might have to get easements. We're going to deal the DLT. Might have to buy property. There might be some stuff with additional water lines, but you know, it's it's definitely. 
I would at least have the conversation, you know, again, with Uptown, we're talking about Uptown and, and that's the, the specific area where we're trying to steer development in an effort to protect a lot of the rest of the town of Canandaigua, right? And, and we have more dense development in that area and you've got businesses, you've got a mixture of industrial and everything else. And yet we basically, and we're running into this from a planning and zoning perspective right now, they come in and we say, okay, you got to go talk to Farmington for water and you got to go talk to the county for sewer. <laughs> And, and we have no control over that, of any of that. So our hands are really tied. If we were to leave this 125 and we don't use it to offset some of the tax increases, could that, I mean, I know that we're benefiting a small portion, but again, that would be yeah, and that's where I don't think it is just benefiting a small portion. If we're talking about splitting it off, then it's talking about benefiting uptown, which benefits the whole town, benefiting development, economic development in the entire community. Like you're just uh, but, but that 125 could could go in there. And if we don't use it for this, that could be used to go towards mm -hmm. a project to potentially put valve and set and split off that part of the district. In this particular case, it could because, and this is where a lot of times we get confused, but when you look at the legalese, and Chris Nadler and I have done a lot of research on this, not only with this district, but also with what we did with Hopewell, also what we're doing with Bristol, this is what we're talking about here for the town of Canandaigua purposes is the Canandaigua Farmington Water District of the town of Canandaigua. So even though, and then on the other, the north side of the line, it's of the town of Farmington, right? So you as the town board of the town of Canandaigua, you actually do control whatever funds are part of the Canandaigua Bristol, or I'm sorry, the Canandaigua Farmington district of the town of Canandaigua. I'm confusing myself. So. Stop throwing Bristol in yeah. yeah, what are we doing for Bristol now? <laughs> it's enough to handle. Yeah, that's a long stretch there. That's a big bet. <laughs> I'm still, I mean, if we put that there, knowing that we don't want to use it, if we don't have to, can we use it, have that there to help jumpstart a potential project that would benefit us greatly in the future? I assume we don't have like a sewer reserve fund that covers both in any way, right? We yeah, have nothing to do with sewer because no. I'm sorry, the water reserve. Yeah, Jared, I, I like, I like your correct. idea there. I, I, I say leave it there. Water. Okay. I, I think you're better off leaving it there. I mean, it's there. Right. Even though there's no project, it could be used for something else. And I would, I mean, I'm, I haven't thought about, you know, I know we've talked about it, but the more we think about it, we're going to go through this issue a lot, especially if Uptown does continue to grow and we're good. I don't want to base growth in, in this, this area on something that's out of our hands. No. So we're constantly no. going to be wringing our hands saying, you know, a lot of, woulda, shoulda, coulda, if they had done this, we wouldn't be in this boat, but this will put it directly in our hands. And I think that's a benefit to a huge oh. benefit to the entire, to the re, not just the town, but the entire area, the candidate, the greater candidate, you know, the whole area to be able to split that off and have that under our control is what I'm getting at. So I'm inclined to, if we have that in the back of our mind, that that's what that should be used for. I'm inclined to leave that in there, knowing that we're, you know, 30% of the way to being able to do this, potentially fix one of our problems. Yeah, and we haven't, uh, I mean, this isn't a formal project in any sense of the word at this point in time, but there could be grant money available, other sources of revenue right. to, you know, help us set that cost, so the cost wouldn't really be all and that great. But if, if we leave it in there with this name on it, would that require another vote by the board in order to put that money toward that district? Well, it would already go in the district, but you know, another option that you could do here is we could create a capital project. You could call it whatever you want, uptown infrastructure or something, which would also give you the flexibility to do something like this. I mean, yeah, there's really any number of options. Right. Yeah. It's in a capital uh, situation. You right. can move that one. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. That would be a good idea. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Let's do that. 
So if so we drop this by the 125. So we take this to 175 at uh, to 875, sorry. And we create a capital that's so we, we're going to need a, we would need to create a capital project by resolution. How about if I work on an amendment that you could introduce during the town board meeting? And I'll email it to you out ahead of time, but then one of you could introduce it at the meeting. All right. Wouldn't, wouldn't we just be changing the title here from yes. Indigo Farmington Water District to? You, uh, you could, but we don't have uh, we don't have a, that specific project created, so we'd have to create uh, that project. We'd, we'd have to create the project and then put money to the project. And it's one of the problems we didn't have enough reserves. We could just we uh, a few reserves. do a reso before this reso that creates the project. <laughs> we'll tell you why in a minute. <laughs> what if we, I mean, we could just create a, yeah, we could have a resolution creating it. Take this off of this line. And then, yeah, whatever whatever way is most logical, Doug, as you're, as you're yeah. right up, let's, let's yeah. go through and do that. Yeah. Well, I'll work yeah. on it. I'll, Kate and I will work on it this afternoon, and uh, All right. you know, we'll we'll try to keep right. it simple for you. We understand the intent, so right, okay. And I think too. I mean, I know that we had a lot of discussion. I think a lot of this discussion, even though it'll be a repeat, it's vital to have Monday night as we talk about some of these things that we're going through because that's one thing a lot of people share is that. You know, a lot of things are discussed at this meeting that aren't at the next one. So I think a lot of these thoughts and questions and comments that people have as much as we can, I mean, not take it, but we've spent probably what, five minutes on this, I think. Um, yeah. at least. I think at least share some of these, this thought, we need to share this thought process is what I'm getting at as we go through this resolution, because um, so people know where we're coming from, why we're here. Uh, why we've decided to do this in the situation that we're in and we're, what we're going towards. Certainly been a good discussion. You know, yeah. No, it has. And I want, and not a lot of people watch the recording, but they'll jump in on Zoom Monday night. So, cliff Please notes. I'm not talking. You know, <laughs> Terry, don't go thinking, don't get an extra espresso thinking I'm thinking of 45 minute, but just to get the yeah. to get the, the thought and the intention through. Okay. Uh, are we done with that one? We'll move on. Again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and item two on the agenda. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. yeah, finally. I forgot we were still going through the agenda. Um, I, I do have some emails here from Bristol, Doug. Do you want to talk about those? <laughs> well, we actually do have a candidate with Bristol Water District, but that's for yeah. another day. So uh, yeah. let's... Yeah, let's talk about those emails that I got about that too, that yeah. you got too. <laughs> um, okay, next resolution here. So this is, you know, we, we've talked many different times about it, but there is a uh, grant window opportunity. We just, right now, you all know, we've had this conversation. We're a little short staffed at the moment with some changes that we're making in staffing. And um, it just don't have the bandwidth internally to make this grant application right now, but there's a tip grant opportunity. And this would be potentially for North Road, complete reconstruction of North Road. We know it needs a complete reconstruction, which would then include complete street with sidewalks, the whole nine yards. This is just to make the grant application. It's a $5,000 proposal from MRB. We did solicit two other entities and neither one of them were able, neither one of them had the bandwidth to take the project on for us. And, and MRB told us, told me specifically that they would really rather not, but because it's the town of Canada, where they're willing to help us out, it's just everybody is super busy with these right now. So anyway, so this would uh, advance that. Any questions on that? No. Oh, okay. Next one, uh, fleet diagnostic equipment, Jim. I'll let you do this that. This is, was budgeted for this current budget year. Wait, uh, was it really budgeted? I don't think it was budgeted. Was oh, it? was it budgeted? No. No, I couldn't find it. Well, but it was discussed. Good try. For sure. Well, nice try. we, I thought it was budgeted. Sorry about that. We have been going every time we take a vehicle with a code, it's 250 to plug it in. We had a scanner that's too old. We cannot read the new stuff. We have a mechanic who is capable of fixing the equipment. We just got to be able to read the codes. So this is our new diagnostic equipment. 
to work with our equipment to be able to perform the necessary repairs on the equipment when we can read the codes. It costs you $250 every time you bring it somewhere to yeah, get it ready. Yeah, worth just to plug it in. How often do you do it? A lot, because of emissions. Mm -hmm. So the white truck goes up every month. It's great. Staff time, getting it there, getting it, it back, gas. It in place. So, and that's yeah. a, a lower quote than we anticipated just as well, Jim, right? You got <laughs> two of them? We have one. That's great. Just one. No, 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 you got two quotes. Oh, yeah, two quotes. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. And there's really two units. Like, I'll just no, go two quotes. one unit, two quotes. Yeah. Lower. Well, nine grand seems office. like a pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, something like that. Yeah. I mean, for, for our fleet, it is. Uh, but we get uh, support from them. There's an annual fee. They'll update it. So, and so it's a, few years, a few years and it's paid for pretty much. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we and need I, it. I can't. Yeah. The code comes up and we're, we can't do anything without clearing it because if we can fix it ourselves, then drive it up there. Right. Right. Yeah, didn't you say they, they set it so they can only go a certain speed? So if it starts going? to derate the emissions, the truck will then come to almost a complete stop yeah. and you can't really have that slow yeah. on. So <clears throat> when you say drive up, you drive it up where? To Rochester? Oh, Rochester. We go to the, to yeah, the west, northwest side of Rochester. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of gas. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the next one is this was in the budget. <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, uh, the wood chipper, we uh, honestly are tired of begging and borrowing and renting a wood chipper when we needed to do our own work. So we budgeted one for this year, and that's the price to do it. It's up the source well contract. So we didn't have to go out to bid. Um, and the amount is 40000 and change. So Jim, what's a 12X wood chipper versus another one? What's that 12X? It's a, a 12 inch means a 12 inch opening. Okay. It takes a little, it could chip up to a 12 inch tree. Wow. That's okay. some serious, that's some serious chipping. It's a big bandit. Yeah. Don't stand it too close. Yeah, no. Nope. Um take an arm for you, right? Yep. <laughs> the next chip. one yeah. is for our agreement to mow 332 for the state of New York. Um, we mow up more than that because we want it to look decent, but that's just because we do. How many, the, how many mowings do you do? Yeah, probably six, seven a year. Yeah. So this pays us for what? Four. 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 Yeah. But we have so a lot of businesses fun. out there. It's like Main Street, so we have to keep a look at decent. When we prepare the uh, 23 budget, and since we now have the Uptown Business Improvement District, we'll have to uh, relook, not necessarily at this, but we're going to have to have ongoing conversations with DOT. I know a number of the businesses have talked about the flowers and the medians, which we'll be able to do with the Uptown bid. So we'll have we to continue that conversation. We had that conversation two years ago with them. We'll probably have to readdress it. So right. I can't remember what we said. Me either. Um, Next one is set uh, the rate of pay for the water meets assistant. Um, this is... Ryan, uh, this oh, is sorry, the 85, on. this is the, is this, that's a question, Lindsay, and is this the 85% step in the collective bargaining agreement? Yes. Is that, it is? Lindsay, you're muted or something. I didn't hear you. Your mic's not working, Lindsay. So, all right. So as long as it's the 85%, because we can't deviate, obviously, from the collective bargaining agreement. I just want to make sure, confirm it's the 85%. Yes, it's 85%. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Hey right, Jim. Jim's trying to create a new, a just invent a new position that doesn't exist. But I budgeted for it. <laughs> Still doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, we need. I need a someone underneath me when I'm not around to operate the water system, so it doesn't fall onto the working supervisor that we currently have in the highway department. So I'm looking to create the position of deputy water superintendent position, or can I consolidate it and pay him to do the duties that I'm supposed to be doing when I'm not around? This would, probably, 5, this would probably be somebody that's- this Yeah, this is gonna be a trial. No, it's just a stipend of 5,000 right. a year. 
Okay. Next one has been our favorite subject of the morning, Canandaigua Farmington Water District. This this resolution just means that the town board is acknowledging uh, the the 202B, 202B and the cost improvements associated with it. So I think we've already hashed that one out. We can skip through that one. I noticed on this one it says the 16th day of February. Yeah. Do I have to say that, or do we need to make an adjustment? Yeah, have to look at that, Kate. Good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that should be month. Yeah. Uh, the next one is the actually if Gary's there, we should let Gary take this one. This is the double frontage <laughs> lot adoption of the tax code amendment that I think Gary's been working on for a year and a half or something now, right, Gary? Both of that. Uh, this can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is something the ordinance committee has been working on for a period of time. As a matter of fact, it's something that's greatly needed because back when I got on the uh, ZBA in uh, 2002, we had several of these come uh, before us at uh, you know with different meetings uh, for uh, variances, and uh, we just thought uh, by you know making this for the residential as the uh, resolution is indicating that it will uh, eliminate some of the uh, uh, people having to get variances for uh, homes that uh, come fall into this category. Um, the next one appoints uh, Chip Saylor as your zoning board chairman for the rest of the year. He's actually, he shared with me, he's really interested and excited to do it. He uh, intends to attend, plans to attend both uh, CIC meetings and PRC meetings. So he was uh, excited about that. The next resolution here uh, appoints Pam Post as our part-time uh, or uh, yeah temporary uh, assessor. Next resolution, I'm just going to skip through these unless somebody has questions. Uh, the next one here is uh, creating a full-time clerk position. It's just we do not have this vacant position. Um, th this is an additional new position. As you know, uh, we've been talking and we have budgeted for some help for Jim in his office and with some possible uh, adjustments being made, we'd like to uh, advance as fastly as, as quickly as possible, advertising for a position and moving forward with that. Right, Lindsay? That's the intent here on this one, right? Yep, right. that's correct. Uh, the similar situation for the next resolution, uh, the Office Specialist 1 position. We have two Office Specialist 1 positions that are both officially vacant at the moment, but they are both officially encumbered. So we can't use either one of them. So we need to create another one again, take care of the current uh, great, what are they calling it now? Not the great resignation, the great realignment, I think is what I heard on the news this morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the great job shuffle. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jim or Lindsay, you wanna grab this next one? Yeah, I can, I can take this one. So after revisiting the job descriptions, um, we have a need to create Two additional transfer station positions, um, but not to create additional um, employees, but to place our laborer employees into that position. So it's just the board authorizing me to create the two transfer station operator positions and then appointing our two current laborers who work at the transfer station into those positions. Okay. It's a civil service thing. Correct. Okay. Wouldn't this uh, also uh, beg the question of Todd? being a supervisor or working supervisor because he's supervising people. He's not a classified that way, is he? No, he's not. He's classified as an MEL, Terry. Should that be, uh, I mean, he's going to be, well, he has been supervising people for, I don't know, decades right. or whatever. Um, Seems like he ought to be, when we were going through uh, last month or earlier this one? month, all the different salaries and everything, it struck me that, you know, different people super working supervisors or whatever. And he's out there supervising people 12 hours a week. Shouldn't he be at that level also? We can have that conversation and we can possibly look at, there may be a working foreman position that was currently available, Terry. Versus a working supervisor, no. we'll speak with Lindsay and see what we have open. Yeah, I can. I can look into that. Does oh. this um, your resolution sixty three that that 
assigns their new, does that have any impact on salaries no. or, okay. No. So HR, I'm sorry. These are all civil service related. Thank you, civil service. Same, you. same, same okay. for the next one. It's just a civil service creation okay. position. Yeah. Doesn't do any, it doesn't do anything for our operations, truthfully. This is something to send over to the county to keep them happy. Let's keep going. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what comes down to. Um, remote participation policy. Actually, your town attorney uh, went through your remote participation policy and was recommending a few amendments to it. So uh, read that one carefully because I haven't read it yet. It came from your Hey, attorney. I've got one question. On page three of that, Roman numeral eight, it says the policy was approved by the town board on July 19th, 2021. Do we need to update that to yes. Um, yes. the effective date? Um, yes. So, and that was, it was last readopted actually at your organizational meeting a couple of weeks ago. So that should have been, it should yeah. say whatever the new is. Yes. Okay. So that's just page. It's page, th it's Roman numeral 7A, page three. Okay. Your 2022 meeting schedule, this was uh, just moving, it's not necessarily moving date, it was just clarification, I think, right? The June town board meeting, it falls actually on Juneteenth, the new holiday. So we need to move the meeting date to the week before, like is our customary practice, June 13th. It's um and then some sureties i think that's it unless somebody has questions um she's getting lindsay um doug doug um we may need you out in the foyer we had somebody fall outside lindsay's okay. dealing with it okay all right thanks yep Set aside some money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember being slipping. Hey. Yeah, yeah, we might need to keep might need to keep an eye on that. Um, so does anybody have anything else? Gene, do you have anything else? Bill, the abstracts, anything, goofy, anything you need to share with us? Yeah, thank you. All right. So I would um I'd like to propose going forward. I thanks to everybody for being flexible with the times and the dates. Um, I'd like to Propose going forward at with at the same time at 1045. Uh, it could either be whatever works, either the Tuesday or, or uh, sorry, the Wednesday or Thursdays. Uh, any preference from Thursday. the from the gallery? Thursdays, Thursdays. Thursday's fine. Thursday. Thursday's fine. Well, so we'll do it on Wednesdays then? No. Uh, no. <laughs> are, are we doing like Second, are we following like the same schedule as the previous, like the week before the two having meetings, the week before the town board meeting, and then was it the week after the town board meeting, Kate? Are we? I just need to know so we can get the press release out. Yeah, you guys tell me. Last year it was specifically the second and third Thursday because that allowed us to capture whichever week fell before the town board meeting. And then the second one would either be before or after. And sometimes we would adjust based on the availability of conversation. So if okay. that works, we can still do second and third Thursday, but do 1045 AM. That works. Would you, yep. is, would you yep. is it necessary yep. for the meeting after the town board meeting? Or? You know, it depends on each month. If there was something to discuss, we certainly enjoyed having that already on the calendar because we didn't have to call a special meeting. So if something came up, but there was a project, a capital project, perhaps we get numbers from Farmington, it could be a good use of that time. And then if we don't need it, we would simply cancel the meeting. For yeah. That. yeah, it's easier to keep it on a calendar. Yeah, easier, to, easier to cancel it if it's already there. And you're not scheduling something else. And then someone all of a sudden there's a meeting. So I can't. I've got something yeah. else. Okay. So okay. we'll we'll go the second and third Thursdays at 1045. Sounds good. Yes. Okay. Thank you. See that. Anybody else have anything to bring forward? No. Nope. All right. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you everybody. And uh, thanks for everybody for your input. I think we had some good conversation and uh, good thoughts being shared and we worked through some things. So thank you for that. And uh, if that is all, I'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. And uh, yeah. 
we'll see some of you guys on uh, Monday night, some of you sooner, some of you later, but uh, enjoy your weekend. I hope everybody's recovered from Sunday night's horrible events. Um, <laughs> not talking about that right now. I'm still, I am still, I am still, I am still, recover from that, you know. I'm still working through my stages of grief and I am almost, <laughs> I'm not quite, I have not watched any game highlights or watched ESPN or the NFL Network since Monday, since Sunday night. <laughs> it's going to be painful watching the game Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I might refuse. And I know, and I know Jim with the news about Ben Roethlisberger, that's, yeah. uh, you know, that's probably sad too. Sad, but, uh, but it was expected. Oh, him retiring. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that would be like me standing out there. He got to the point where he really couldn't move. Tom Brady, that'd be great. Yeah, I know. I like watching him lose. All right. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.